Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. Joining us now to look at what's trending today around the world is Oji Okpe. Good morning. Good morning, How Leila. How are you? I love your yellow. Thank you. Hi, Dr. Abati. No more high fives. This is our last high five. <laughs> Good morning, too, because we're always like going across to the <laughs> world. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> How are you? I'm great. How great. And good morning to you viewers. We begin what's trending today in Nigeria. As many Nigerians, especially the people of Imo State, ponder over the Supreme Court's inexplicable decision to nullify the election of Emeka Ihedioha as governor, some members of the All Progressive Congress, including National Chairman Adam Sushomali and former governor of Imo State, Racha Sokoracha, were seen in a now viral video congratulating the new governor, Hope Uzodima, on Wednesday. Let's take a look. I'm not going to you now. <laughs> but I'm singing the song. We are a united. We are a society. As if we come away, we put the fat behind. As if we come back, going back. Yes, yes, yes. Excellent. Excellent. Hmm. Excellent. Okay, we're going now. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Foreign exchange. <laughs> I guess in politics, there are no permanent friends or enemies, but, you know, permanent interests. I mean, a few months ago, you could have sworn that, you know, both uh, Racha Sakoracha and um, Hopi Zojima were art enemies, but now you can see that they are They're come back together. together. <laughs> and did well, you see that last, carols. the last sentence he made <laughs> yeah. was in Pidgin English, I don't catch you, right? <laughs> well, I yes, think one, yes. the chairman of the... Uh, all progresses Congress. I could see that he was in a very happy yes. mood. But he would need to take singing lessons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's been he, singing all over social media, If he media, attempts to wax way. an album, I don't think he will be able to, uh, <laughs> you know, to compete with either the video or, or you know, whiskey. But that's on the uh, right. junior side. Uh, the other point to make, of course, is that um, this has happened. The APC should not be over triumphant. As we have said on this program, we have not seen the end of the drama in Imo State yet. And I don't think anybody should write off uh, Emeka Ihedioha. I think that this may even work to his advantage in the long run, because as we said, uh, not many people in Imo State are convinced, or even in Nigeria, that justice has been done. Right. And we are all waiting for the Supreme Court, you know, to explain how, you know, their lordships arrived at this uh, strange mathematics. Uh, that has, uh, you know, uh, brought this situation about. And you used the right word. You said inexplicable. Yes. Well, that may be too definitive, you know, but people are impatient. They just want to know, you know, uh, the reasoning behind that uh, ruling. The other point, of course, about uh, that video that you showed, I think it was Tuno that raised the uh, point earlier. The governor at the inauguration then said, oh, he's going to focus on rehabilitation, reconstruction, and recovery. And that doesn't quite sound original. He's playing on uh, what uh, General Gohan Go said slogan. after the end of the uh, Civil War. Mm -hmm. So whoever wrote that script for him could have been more creative, right. more original. Uh, but he then, you know, we've been told that he plans to uh, probe his predecessors uh, from the days of Joachim. And you could see Rocha Sokorocha there, the you know, excited, uh, based on the principle of the enemy of my enemy yes, is my, my friend. friend. And now he's been told that he's going You're to be probed. probed too. But I think what we have seen in Nigeria, when you start with probing people, it's always a distraction. That it should is. not be the main priority for Hope Uzondima as he settles down. Good the people governance. of Imo State, you know, they are looking forward that uh, things will turn around. After, as I said yesterday, the comedic era of uh, Rocha Sukurocha. Yeah. And there's a lot to be done. And yes. Emeka Hedioa, you know, pointed out in his statement, in which he was quite gracious in the defeat, you know, yes, that he, he had started a number gracious. of things, yes. you know, uh, to the delight of the people of Imo State. The people of Imo State, they need good governance. They need progress. They need hope. And uh, hope is on this amount to provide that hope. Provide the hope progress. that will match his name. Mm -hmm. Very intended. Very well said, Dr. Abati. While still in Nigeria, a group known as Serve with Skirts Movement has asked the federal government to allow female youth corps members to wear skirts during their mandatory service year or face being charged to court. 
On Wednesday, members of the movement were protesting in Abuja, carrying placards. Some read, there is a difference between the world and the daughters of God. While others read, our sisters cannot dress like men. They should be decently covered. The group claimed that wearing out trousers by female core members evoked immorality. In December 2017, a law student, Amasa Ferdos, was not called to bar for allegedly breaking the dress code by wearing a hijab, but was later recalled after an outrage. I would just like, you know, naturally I would think that if you want to talk about invoking immorality, a skirt may do that more than trousers. <laughs> just no, but in the Bible, about it. In the Bible, in the Old mm -hmm. Testament, it says that women should not like men, men should not dress like Before women. Before Jesus came so, with the good news. No, but a lot of people still adhere to and that. There's some problem. churches that you cannot wear yeah. trousers. I think MFM, you Ms. can't Stephanie wear trousers. Ms. Stephanie came and told us about this when we spoke a about A lot of people yes. feel this came way. Out. A lot yes. of people do feel mm -hmm. this well, way. This you know, this I clearly disagree, but some people think that. Yeah. This controversy is not new. Right. When the NYSC first started, when it was introduced by the Gowon administration, the ladies who participated actually wear skirts, and the photographs are available. Right. But the kind of activities, paramilitary uh, drills yeah, that are part of, uh, you know, the NYSC, uh, then there was an outrage. Uh, you can't have women wearing skirts and you ask them to climb, uh, it's not decent. you know, ropes yes. or you ask them to engage in activities where they have to, uh, like the taekwondo uh, lady in, uh, stretch their legs. in Iran, you know, stretch their <laughs> legs. And that became an issue. Yeah. And that was revised. So the resort to uh, the wearing of trousers for ladies participating in the National Youth Corps was for practical reasons. Right. And I think that we have to learn a lesson, you know, not to always mix religion with everything. Exactly. But of course, you are right. There are persons who feel that, look, uh, women should wear skirts. They should not dress like a man. Yes. But we have women in the military. Right. So how far will you go with this? Would they say that... Female they soldiers at the NDA, she also wears skirts. No, this is how but ridiculous we, you can be. Right. But yeah. you, in your report, you said that the lady with the hijab was eventually right. called to the bar. So this is the problem. It is a slippery slope. It is Once a slippery slope. Once you cave slope. in, then right. to one there's no end to it. To, yes, you yeah, have yeah. to attend to but, everybody. But else. also, if people are complaining, they, I mean, this is the era of change. You can't change the law. I mean, like, I think we had this conversation earlier that not every member of the youth service will have to go through those rigorous practices of climbing you know, the trees or whatever it is that make them get exposed. So are you going so, to exclude women? Yes, absolutely. Completely. No, not women. The women that do not want no, to No, then there's no point. Skirts. Then there's no point. Because, because, right? like the same law. But then everybody. there are also skirts that have shorts underneath. Skorts. You, when skorts, I was in, when I was in school them. in the UK, we wore skorts for some sports. Yes. We had a choice on what gender that's that's different. Shorts, exactly. Skorts you know, and mini, mini skorts. Skirts. are literally this short. So, so if they want us to be walking around in that, no problem. So that's not going to no work problem. for these people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you know, there is freedom. I mean, I think, I know, it would it probably would not work, but I believe that there should be some sort of, uniform, some sort of room for change for for those types of people. I mean, I, I don't see any reason why there shouldn't be at this point. Well, let's take our final sto story. We'll head over to the UK now. Thomas Markle, father of Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle, could potentially end up testifying against her in a court battle over her treatment in the UK media. Meghan filed a lawsuit last year against the Mail on Sunday newspaper for allegedly publishing a letter she wrote to her father unlawfully. However, according to the Daily Mail, court documents filed by the paper on Tuesday revealed that Meghan's father is part of the paper's defense. It is not yet clear whether the Duchess will testify should the case reach the courts, but the documents appear to show that Meghan's father has been cooperating with the defense, making him a likely witness. On Tuesday, the Duchess made her first appearance after the couple announced they would step back as senior members of the royal family when visiting a women's center in Vancouver. I mean, this whole controversy, this saga seems like it will a have mess. no end. It will uh, I mean, it's it's just... now it's going to just be a mess. I wrote a piece by Piers Morgan on yes. this issue. Oh, how did you manage that? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I can't. Piers Morgan, he's on Good Morning yes. Britain, uh, you know, from our editor and all that. And he was saying, he was raising a number of moral issues that when, you know, Thomas Marco did not attend the daughter's wedding. Right? Yeah, it was, was because he had a health situation. The heart attack, I believe. Yes, yeah. and you know the daughter did not get in touch uh, with him either before or after the uh, uh, wedding. Nobody knows. And that, Is that true? And that even the son-in-law and even the son-in-law didn't care enough 
So he just uh, he referred to uh, Meghan Markle as uh, the Queen of Hearts and, uh, you know, uh, Prince Harry as the King of uh, the Prince of Mental Health. You know, I recommend he's, that article, but it looks really messy that family health. things, you know, have been uh, brought uh, to the surface in this time. Yeah. It's just been nasty all through. It really has. Oji, thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much, Oji.